Whoa, stop, 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 stop. I think those stories might have been true. Hey, welcome back to the channel. We're back over at the farm and we got a new trailer as you can see here. This is a, a load trail, a tilt back trailer. It's got 14,000 pound axles on it. It's a gooseneck. And we're gonna show you a lot more about this in the future as we get a little bit more time under our belt. But you guys are probably here to see about the T25 tractor by TYM. Uh, we're gonna grab the tractor off the farm, uh, throw it on a trailer, and we're gonna do a 50 hour review uh, kind of tell you what we like and don't like about the tractor. We're also going to do a 50 hour service. So as we go through servicing the tractor, uh, we'll tell you what we like and don't like. You guys come on. Oh, so we got lucky our, our good neighbor Chuck is walking by, walking his dog and he's here to push the button down for me so I don't have to get off and take the chance of slipping on this wood floor. Now once I get the wireless remote, I'll just sit on the tractor and push the button, but this makes it a lot safer. Hey, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna give you the down and dirty. We're just gonna show you how to do a 50 hour service and kind of give you a 50 hour review along the way. So first thing we're gonna do is take the loader off because I wanna get the loader out of the way so we can actually get to the track. Yo. We're just gonna take these pins out. This is not a complete how to take the loader off, but pretty, pretty well. Just put the legs down, take the big pins out. I'll grab the one on the other side now. So this had a little tension on it, so I cranked it up and just moved it around and it just pops right out. So she backed the camera up while I was uh, moving the joystick and the loader just come right out of its cradle like it's supposed to. So you guys didn't get to see that, still no big deal. Like I said, this is not how to take a loader off, it's how to do a quick service on a tractor. So these are my uh, lines, I just, they're quick connects. Pop all your lines off, get them out of the way. All right, so now the loader is off, we're just gonna back it away. Uh, and also what I'm gonna do right now, so I don't forget this, and I don't want these falling on my head when I'm doing that service. So I'm gonna put this these pins back in here so they're out of the way and not lost. You'd be surprised how quickly those pins can get lost. They have a way of walking away. I went down the road and threw the mud off the tires. So the T25 is a basically an upgraded version of the T264. They took the same tractor, uh, extended the wheelbase uh, a little bit so it's, it's better suited for a mid-mount mower if you have that option. However, we wanted the backhoe and you cannot use the mid-mount mower and the backhoe at the same time. All right, so another difference between the T264 and the T25 is, is the 264 had a Coupe J engine in it, which is a, a TYM engine, they own the company. Uh, but on the T25, they went with the Yanmar, so both of them are 25 horsepower. Uh, I see the big difference is, uh, is this has a single hydraulic pump, so it has a really large single hydraulic pump. The flow rates between the 264 and the uh, T25 are basically identical. I can't really feel any, you know, hardly any difference at all between the how they work. In this case, uh, again, the smaller tractors, it just is not a, that big a deal. Uh, they put, a, they use a diverter valve, and that diverter valve keeps a certain amount of flow 
uh, from you know going to the implement and a certain amount of flow going to the uh, the tractor steering. So diverter valves have been around for years. Uh, they're pretty well established. They're pretty well, you know, they, they know how to do it. I've had really no issues at all. I mean, I have had no issues at all, like picking a log up with a loader and steering at the same time. So I don't really, I think that's a just neutral. There's no, nothing gained or lost in, in this area. So now let's talk about the actual engine. This uses the Anmar 25 horsepower engine. And again, it's not, it's different than the 264's Coupe J. The Coupe J, both of them are great engines. I really like both of them. I will say that they've done a good job quietening this Yanmar down. Uh, they've got a really nice muffler on it. And in the past, Yanmars have been really loud. They put some, uh, some insulation on the other side of this firewall. Seems like it really knocks down the, the noise. And they got a nice hood on it that really seems to muffle the noise. So as far as two tractors set beside each other, I still think the Coupe J is a little bit quieter, but nothing that it's gonna bother you in any way. So the T25 has a lot more creature comforts or it's just a lot more comfortable tractor in my opinion. The 264 is great for what it is. It's a small tractor and you can stay on it all day if you need to, but they went all out and put a nice seat on this. Now this seat is raised up about uh, two inches higher than the 264, which in turn makes you have a lot uh, more leg room. The, it also has a spring loaded seat so that it, it, as you ride along it, you don't have the sharp bounces like you do on the 264. This is a, a really nice seat. Talk about a few more things on this side. Uh, again, creature comforts, there's a power outlet here. Uh, so you can plug in any, anything pretty much. I use, a, I have an electric chainsaw sharpener that runs off 12 volt. I plug that in and I, I sharpen my chainsaw with that. On the other side, let's walk around the other side and, and look at this side. All right, so this is the wireless charging port. So you take your cell phone and when you're driving around, you just put your phone in there and this phone or this tractor will charge your phone wirelessly if, you're, you know, if your phone will accept wireless charging. So that's a nice little feature. I've really used that a lot, especially when I wear my Bluetooth uh, hearing uh, protectors. Uh, it, I can, my phone stays completely charged all the time and I don't have to worry about it. It's got USB ports, two USB ports that are like 2.5 amps. So if you don't have wireless charging on your phone, you can just plug a wire in here and charge your phone. Still just turn it upside down, or just put it in the same chute. So same thing. Um, it's got a really nice cup holder with little rubber tabs that holds your drink in and keeps it flotting around. It does have another holder on the other side, but it, you know, with this, you really don't need anything else. So your throttle is here. I, they, they put a nice bigger handle here. It's, it's, it's more ergonomic, I guess is the word I'm looking for. Again, I, I, that's perfectly placed for me. The three-point hitch lever is considerably smoother than the 264. So my, my T25 is, uh, I guess, like the, the, the next run, if you will. So the first run of tractors, uh, they had a single button here. So for, for, uh, you could buy a factory diverter valve and, and put on the loaders. My tractor come wired with a two button system, just like the 474. Uh, this is made for a true third function valve. We have a video out where we put the third function kit on. It took about 30 minutes to install the kit because this kit was already wired. All I had to do is just plug and play. It was literally really easy. It took 30 minutes to put it on. So one thing I'm not a huge fan of, I don't know if there's any other thing they could do with it, uh, I will say they put an upgraded fuel cap on it. This is like a legitimate fuel cap, like you could get it AutoZone or anything. The um, the 264 had more of a I don't I don't know what you would say. Uh, it was just a plastic cap, and it was kind of hard sometimes to get on and off. It would stick. This is just a standard cap. Now the drawback to this is the same as the 264. The 264 is its location. So when you're trying to lift up a five gallon can. Uh, and you're, you got something on the rear of the three-point hitch, you, it is difficult to get around that stuff. Uh, I have found that I can come from this side and do pretty good. Uh, or if I can step on the, like if I got a bush hog on, I can just stand on the bush hog and do it. It's still, it's still something to, it's, it's, I, it's not my favorite thing. It's definitely not a showstopper, but it's not my favorite thing. So let's talk about the headlights or the lights in general. There's literally no tractor on the market right now, especially in this size that has a better headlight. Uh, hands down, I, I say that unequivocally. That's my big word for today. So it also comes with, like I said, these speakers are optional. 
but these lights here are standard and these lights um, generally you can when you get them they're aiming forward but we took uh, and, and ordered the additional kit that you can plug and play on the tractor and they have three LEDs up at the top these lights literally will turn night into daylight I, again they're expensive I, I, I don't want to say that they're not expensive they are expensive but they work and they're heavy built the frames are heavy built that frame is heavy built the lights are heavy built they should basically last you the life of the tractor um, and then when you put the three up here i have the three aimed out front kind of at, at an angle like this like a, a spectrum and then the headlights work the fill in the rest and then i have these two turned around aimed towards the back i can work i can mow day or night it just doesn't matter with this tractor with this light kit, you can run, like if you don't want to run out in the heat of the day, you can literally go out and brush cut in, in the middle of the night if you want to. So there's only thing you got to worry about is bugs. So this tractor comes standard now with rear remotes. Uh, if your tractor is an older version, I mean one of the first ones to come out, it may have not had the rear remotes on it. It's my understanding that all the new ones are coming with a, the rear remotes already pre-installed from the factory. But if you do end up getting one of the older ones, you can get the rear remotes. They take a literally, it takes the, again, like 30 minutes to install that kit. It, I've got a video where we did it. It was super easy, 30 minutes and out. Now you'll see here, we have this uh, kit, this Summit kit. Don't take this into account as far as this, this review because this is an add-on kit that I bought and placed on this tractor because we use a, uh, a, uh, a flail mower that is offset and has hydraulics. I need more than one circuit, so I, I had to put on something like this. So the rear PTO has this cover, and I am, I'm not a big fan of this uh, cover. I think that it should be able to be lifted up when you're installing the PTO. Uh, this one's solid, and you can still get in there. There's a lot of room, but to me, I, I would rather this to lift up and down. So let's talk about the control valve for the rear remotes. Um, it's, this is a detent valve, so when you use the backhoe, you're going to flip it over. It's gonna provide continuous hydraulic pressure to the backhoe so that you can work it. So that's good for the backhoe, but there's some drawbacks to it as well. So the first drawback is, is like if you're using a hydraulic top link, you have to put, you know, you pull, push the cylinder out and then put it back to the neutral position. If you don't put it back to the neutral position yourself, it's gonna to continue to extend the cylinder out or if you're going the other way, it's gonna to continue to retract the cylinder back in. So that's one thing that I'm, it's not, a, it's not a good or bad, it's just you have to learn to work with it. I will say this next one is probably my least favorite thing on the entire tractor as far as ergonomics. They've done so many great things with it, uh, but this valve being right here, every now and then when I get off the tractor, I will bump this. And what it does, it will deadhead the pressure to the rear remotes. Um, and it's just something you learn to work around. You just don't even think about it anymore. I don't think about it anymore, but every now and then I'll have my pants leg hang this and it'll, it'll deadhead that rear remote. And you'll get on the tractor and wonder why your three point hitch won't raise up and down. It's because the rear remote's been deadheaded and you, you figure it out really quick. It's something that it's just, you don't even think about it anymore. I don't think about it anymore. 50 hours later, I don't think about it. And this is the exact same way it was on the T264 as well. So that's not changed at all. Uh, the other thing is, is if you ever have this tractor and you, your three-point hitch will not go down, it's you've most likely take your foot and hit push down on this and you've tightened this knob up to the point that the three-point hitch will not drop. This is, this controls how fast the three-point hitch, you know, drops down. You raise the three-point hitch up and you put it down. If you want it to go down really slow, then you just let it bypass very slowly. If you want your implement just to fall down, then you can open this valve all the way up. But when, you know, when you first start this tractor up, now I don't even get my foot near this anymore. It's just that I, I have trained myself not to get near it. But it, when you first get the tractor, I've heard of several people taking their heel and they'll, they're just over a period of time, the heel will keep bumping it. And eventually it will, over a period of time, it will shut that valve off. And then your three point hitch won't go down. So the T25, in my opinion, is skirting over the subcompact and kind of crossing that line where it's a compact tractor. It's a little bit bigger than a subcompact tractor. What I consider a subcompact tractor, it's a little bit heavier than what a subcompact tractor, in my opinion, is. And then it also has features that no other subcompact tractor has. And that is it has dual rear brakes like a, most all of your big tractors do. So you can take and flip this lever 
and you can push this brake pedal and lock the left wheel, turn your steering wheel to the left and go to the end of a, like at the end of your garden, you can spin the tractor around really fast to go the other direction. That was something that used to be a big portion of what tractors do. So I don't think it's as important anymore, but some people may still want that functionality. I will tell you something that a lot of people don't think about with having dual brakes. So if anybody has ever back dragged with their tractor and they, they put so much pressure that the front wheels are not getting traction and that you lose the ability to steer. Well, with these type brakes, you can go ahead and steer your tractor by hitting the brake to make it go the direction you want to. So you actually kind of still have a bit of steering when you're back dragging really heavy. All right, so let's talk about hydrostatic on this or let's don't talk about hydrostatic. I think it's better not to talk about it because the simple fact is it just works perfectly. I don't have anything negative to say about it. it hydrostatic has been figured out a long time. Uh, TYM does a great job with this, so there's nothing negative to say about the hydrostatic. It just absolutely works perfectly. And that's all I'm gonna say about that. This is the end of the review, but watch our next video where we do the service and you're gonna see, we'll talk about some of the things that I missed in the review. Hey, please subscribe to our channel. It really helps us grow and we're trying to grow. God bless and have a great day. I forgot to undo the one when I came back around. Raise it just a little bit. Okay.